What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be going through how to build a chia plotting slash farming rig from scratch. I have built my rig already so I will just walk you through how to do everything. Building a chia plotting rig is kind of like building a mid to high end system. If you've ever built a computer it's going to be fairly similar. It's a little bit different than building a GPU mining rig as with those you want to get as many PCI ports as possible so you can put as many graphics cards. With these it's a little bit different. We kind of need a mix of a bunch of different things depending on what you're doing with the system. So first things first, this is going to be primarily a plotting based system but I'm also going to be using it to farm. And to farm as you can see here I do have quite a bit of drives and I did go ahead today and purchase two more four terabyte drives from Micro Center. Unfortunately, all the 16 and above terabyte drives are now out of stock. So first thing is first, what do you need to build a Chia plotting rig? Well, there's a couple different things and you need to balance them. The first thing that you are gonna need or the most important thing that you are gonna need is a processor with a lot of cores and a lot of threads. The more cores and threads that your processor has, the more Chia plots that you can do concurrently or in parallel as it's called on the Chia network. This means you can push out more plots per day, making your time per plot smaller and helping you catch up with the network way faster. So my current desktop right now is barely keeping up with the network because it is expanding so crazy, right? So we have this plotter here that's gonna help double, if not maybe just a little bit more the amount of drives that I can fill a day. So first things first is that processor is really important, but it's not just a processing alone kind of thing. You're gonna need a lot of RAM. So with a Chia plot, on average, you're taking about two to four threads depending on what settings you have. I normally use two threads, two cores per plot. So if you have a 12 core, 24 thread system, that means you can do 12 concurrent plots. This system here is a Ryzen 3700 with eight cores and 16 threads. That means I should comfortably be able to run about eight plots simultaneously on the machine. Now there are things like timing that can help you do more plots at a time using uh, these different stages of Chia some stages like stages two and stages four are not as intensive on the processor as stages one and three. So if you time everything so that when one plot gets out of stage one and jumps into stage two that your next plot starts and then hopefully they swap over. So one will go to two and then you start the next one and it'll be on one so your CPU is constantly on and then they should both hop over to the next stage. Now if you do this you might be able to even double your plotting power but it gets very tricky and the problem with that is you're going to run out of space which is the next thing you need. You are going to need both RAM and solid state space. So for every plot I usually have a rule of about four gigabytes. So if I'm running about eight plots that's going to be 32 gigabytes. Now that's exactly what this machine has here and like with the CPU usage different plotting sections also use different RAM. There's a whole bunch of information on that. I'm going to try and link it down below so you guys can look at the graphics and decide how you want to plot everything yourself. Um, for me right now I am just doing seven plots at a time with this. I should be able to get about 17, 15 to 17 plots per day. I'm trying to squeeze it out as much as possible, but that's what I'm getting with it right now. And hopefully in the future, I'll be able to better optimize it. I've only had it for about four days and that's what I've gotten so far. Uh, Chia takes a while. It's about six to eight hours per plot. And so when I wanna make a change, I have to wait about six to eight hours. If I wanna sleep instead, well, then it's gonna happen the next day. So. RAM, you're gonna need a lot of RAM. You're gonna need a processor with a lot of cores. And next, you're gonna need a solid state. And the solid state is very important because if you are plotting directly to a hard drive, as I've done in the past, it takes about 24 hours per single plot. 
and plotting in parallel is a very big no-go on a hard drive because it can barely keep up with one plot. If you put two plots concurrently on one drive, more than likely it's going to take multiple days to finish those plots just because a hard drive cannot read and write at the exact same time and it's a very slow spinning disk so if you want to throw something at it, it needs to read it, spin the disk and then you're trying to read something back, it needs to read it and spin the disk until it finds that piece of data. Now hard drives are very optimized to doing this and that's why you can get read and write speeds at like 200 megabytes per second uh, with faster drives, even the helium inflated drives, those ones are really efficient, but they can't match a solid state. A SATA solid state, you should be able to do a couple plots on it, maybe like two plots on it, um, or three if you're lucky. But the thing is, a SATA solid state is limited to the SATA bandwidth that is available through SATA uh, 6 gigabits per second, and that comes out to about 500 megabytes per second, which sounds like a lot, but in reality it is not, especially if you're trying to do multiple plots. I recommend getting something like an NVMe uh, 1 to 2 terabyte SSD. So an M.2 NVMe 1 to 2 terabyte SSD. There are other types of NVMe uh, SSDs, but the most common one is gonna be an M.2. So that's what I recommend you guys use. Try to find one with the most endurance possible. Most manufacturers label their endurance in TBW, which is terabytes written. Um, some really low end solid states might only have six terabytes written while some of the higher end might have 3,000 to 6,000 depending on how cheap and how expensive they go with their process. So now we have a processor. I have the 3700X. We have RAM. I have 32 gigs of RAM and we have solid states. I in this machine have a one terabyte solid state directly in the board, a 500 gigabyte solid state directly in the board, and then I'm using a PCI add-in card down here to get another 512 gigabyte SSD. The two 512 gig solid states that I have are rated together to give me a total of one terabyte. So this machine has, in theory, two terabytes of NVMe storage. I haven't seen a big difference, honestly, between plotting on the rated one and the non-rated one. Um, the rated one is two Gen 3 M.2s, or NVMEs, and the 512s are two Gen 3 SSDs versus the one terabyte is a PCI Gen 4 SSD, which is theoretically faster, so it is very possible that the two in RAID is making enough speed for the one in PCI4, or Chia just doesn't use that much of an NVMe drive. Now, after you have chosen which components you wanna use, scaling them with the rule of thumb being two cores per plot, four gigabytes per plot, and about 256 gigabytes per plot also, which, it's actually a little bit less, but give yourself a little overhead, that way your solid state's not constantly full because they do slow down as the drive increases in utilized space. So, like I said, two threads, four gigs, and 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, after you have whatever you wanna use for hardware to plot, you are gonna need something to store it in. I have two 16 terabyte Seagate drives and a 14 terabyte Helium Western Digital drive and then another eight terabyte Seagate drive with the additional two Seagate terabyte or eight terabyte drives that I purchased today. Um, there is no real specific thing that you need to get when purchasing a hard drive. The more space, the better because you can fill all of this with 16 terabyte drives and have a bunch of space, or you can fill it all with four terabyte drives and have not a lot of space. So obviously the more space, the better it's gonna be in the long run because you need less equipment to house all that. But you also wanna be careful with the cost per terabyte of the drives. You don't wanna spend, let's say for example, you have a drive, drive A is $15 per terabyte, 
Drive B is $20 per terabyte. This one's a 16 terabyte and this one's a four terabyte. You are better off financially purchasing this one because it's $15 per terabyte, saving you $5 per terabyte, then buying a 16 terabyte drive for $20 per terabyte because that extra savings you could even use to purchase an add-in card to give you more SATA ports if you need. But if you are space constrained, then you'll probably have to go with the 16 terabyte. Um, Amazon is running out of stock and probably is all out of stock right now. Best Buy is pretty much out of stock. Uh, the micro centers near me are running very low. They do have some stock. So if you are living near a micro center and you have time to go out, check online before you do, but also get there as fast as possible and buy these drives because they are not lasting very long. When I spoke to the micro center rep today, he mentioned that they had over 30 people in the store from opening until 3 p.m. when I showed up buying just hard drives. Now, some people came in and bought some hardware too, so they couldn't say that was just for Chia, but it's becoming more and more popular to, to purchase hard drives for Chia mining as the price of Chia increases. And you can tell because the network growth has just been absolutely exponential. So when you get all your components and you wanna build the, the computer, it's kind of just like building a normal computer. Firstly, I would put the motherboard and screw it into the case then go ahead and put in the processor and attach the heatsink cooler. Nextly, you'll want to install the RAM into the processor, or <laughs> you'll want to install your RAM into the motherboard, and then you are going to add in your NVMe drives. Um, for a motherboard, I prefer something that has the most amount of NVMe slots as possible, just because, like I said, those SATA ports are very slow. If you can't find a motherboard that utilizes multiple NVMe slots, there is something you can use. And let me go grab it. And this is what you're gonna wanna use. It is a PCI 1X or 4X, sorry, to NVMe solid state adapter. All you have to do is plug in the SSD and then screw it in here and you can slot it into the motherboard like I have down here for my 512. This will allow you to get more NVMe drives in the computer as long as you have free PCI ports and lanes available. Now each one of these is gonna take four PCI lanes, so make sure you have enough lanes available, otherwise it's gonna run at slower speeds or just won't work at all. For reference, most Intel processors have about 16 lanes and the Ryzen processors have around 20-ish and then Threadripper has anywhere from like 40 to 80 and then Xeons usually have about 40-ish. So I would Google your processor plus PCI lanes to find out exactly how many you have just in case. Uh, that's pretty much all you need. You will need obviously a power supply, one with more SATA power ports as possible. That way you can plug in all your drives. I really like the modular power supplies for something like that. I don't have one in this rig right now, but it is on the way from Amazon. I couldn't get it same day. And unfortunately, Micro Center was also out of relatively inexpensive power supplies. They did still have the $1,000 plus power supplies, but you really don't need anything like that for something like this. With my 3700X, 32 gigs of RAM, a couple of hard drives and a couple of SSDs, realistically, you probably don't need anything more than a 750 watt power supply. In fact, you could probably even bring it down to like a 600 or 650 watt power supply and maybe even more. I haven't tested the power consumption when plotting, but when everything is done and you're no longer plotting, it is gonna be idling for most of the day until it finds something and has to spin up the drive. And a hard drive only uses anywhere from five to 20 watts of power for a brief period of time until the drive spins back down. So it is gonna be way cheaper than running graphics cards. You really don't have to worry about keeping the computer on. It might only be like a couple of dollars a month to, to power the whole thing versus 
a graphics card mining system that with the few that I have here, I'm probably spending about $300 in electricity a month. Now, granted, it is definitely worth it, but we can see Chia might outpace graphics cards mining as it becomes more and more competitive and harder to find graphics cards. There is a massive shortage of the graphics cards and hard drives are not in extreme shortage and should have less chance of going into a massive shortage like graphics cards because the market is more mature, more saturated, and data centers buy a lot of hard drives, like a lot of hard drives. And so we should be able to buy some of those and there should be enough overhead. And if there's not, it's a lot easier for like Western Digital, Seagate, Toshiba, and who, whoever to ramp up their production to meet demand because they don't have to worry about the reselling market as much uh, because the data centers are still gonna buy brand new drives. They're probably not gonna go out and buy our drives when we're done, so they still have that customer base. So once you have everything uh, hooked up to your system, powered on and everything, you're gonna wanna go ahead and power on the system and install your operating system of choice. Now, there is a caveat that I want to mention when it comes to choosing your operating system and that is the speed of plotting. Now plotting on Windows is 20% less efficient. That means if you are using a Linux based system you should be able to push 20% the amount of plots that a Windows based system is using. That, and it is a little bit more advanced using Linux because it's not as user-friendly as something like Windows. There aren't as many tools and things available for Linux as there are for Windows that you might be familiar with, but it is something that I recommend going ahead and trying. It's honestly not that hard to use Linux, especially like Ubuntu. Uh, which has a lot of developer support. So if you have questions, usually you can find the answers online. And a lot of Chia plotting uh, tools and things like that have also been uh, made specifically for Ubuntu. There are some for Windows, but there is a plethora more made for Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the tools that I use down in the description below. These tools are things like a plotting dashboard where you can see how many plots you're making per day, how many plots are passing the filter, and just a bunch more data. There's some other ones that show like the drive health and things like that, but there are a lot of Chia tools and I'm gonna put the Chia tool website down below. That way if you guys have any uh, need for these tools, go ahead and just check them out. And uh, if you see one that you like, go ahead and install it. It's really helpful. I love the Chia dashboard because I can see all my plots and how they're doing. Like you can see the percentage, you can see when they started, you can see how many plots pass the filter, and you can see your Chia balance. So it comes very handy when I'm not at home, but I want to check it either on my phone or on my laptop or any device like my iPad, something like that. It does come in handy. So all that being said, that's pretty much everything you need to know on choosing your parts and putting them together and setting up your Chia mining, uh, farming, plotting rig. I do have another video on how to actually start the plotting process. So if you need help with that, go ahead and check out that video. If you guys have any questions on how to do certain things, let me know down in the description below. I've been getting a lot of feedback and we'll probably have a video coming out later explaining what plots are because I've seen a lot of confusion on that. Um, another little tidbit that has been very handy is if you're using multiple computers to plot, make sure that your network is fast enough if you're moving them that way. I personally fill up a hard drive and then move it to the system from my gaming rig because it's a lot faster than trying to put things over the network unless you're talking about like a 10 gig plus network. Uh, but yeah, that being said, any questions or anything, leave it down in the description below. I try to read every comment as soon as possible. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. I appreciate you guys for sticking through the video. Thanks and see you later.